Hi, welcome back and thanks for coming back. Thanks for your patience. I apologize this has taken a little bit longer than I thought it would to generate this tutorial. I'd hoped it would be straightforward, but it has been tricky. I've been working on creating loops uh, to the uh, on, on, on the path and I remember in Unity now, this was actually quite a fiddly thing to do, but I'd forgotten quite how fiddly it was. Um, and I thought rather than actually go through uh, and type the code as we go, it would be horrible. It would be absolutely awful simply because um, there's a lot of monotony here and a lot of kind of cell counting and whatever. So what I thought I'd do is I'd give I'd show a demo of, of how I did it. And then I'll show you the code that's been generated alongside some extra uh, export variables and some tests and some stuff. And you can probably notice that I've actually populated the ground now with some different tiles. So we've got trees, rocks, crystals in there uh, as well, just to make it a little bit more interesting. I mean, the end game for this, as you know, is going to be the fact that <clears throat> these resources that are on the ground now, the crystals and stuff, can be used to generate and make uh, the turrets. So uh, at least that's, that's the idea. That's the thinking. I'm not quite sure how that's going to evolve yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Right now, what we care about is the uh, is the loops and how we go about generating them. So that, I'll put a little presentation together. Let me bring that up right now. Right, so what's happening here? This is the, what we've got here is a standard path, right? Nothing particularly amazing about this. And what the logic needs to do is it needs to say, well, what candidates have we got here where we could put a loop? Um, and maybe you can spot it already. There's a candidate here that we could put a loop. There's a candidate here, here, and here. And I've done this deliberately. But in order for them to be there, we need to make sure that it's not in the way of any other path elements. So it's very obvious here that it isn't. But so how do we create a logic that says, you know, th this example here in this corner here, what I'd like, what I need to do is I need to check. Obviously, I need to check the the um, uh, the cells that are around it for the loop. But I also need to give it a little bit of breathing room as well, because if I end up, let's just say this went right and then up again, we'd end up with these next to each other, and the logic wouldn't know how to um, wouldn't know how to proceed. Plus, I like, as you know, I like a good gap. <laughs> so um, yeah, we, we're going to check these ones above. I, I honestly don't think we need to check the ones above um because i can't see how it could go round and above but anyway but just to be on the safe side uh, you know we're, we're checking all around those and 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 the same exists for the right hand side we'll check you know b b below it to the right of it left and above as well and uh, for these ones for the inner ones you know the um we want to check slightly above it right down and left and finally for that one on the bottom right all of these have loops and you'll notice what i've done as well is i've said well look if we're going to be here then the path is going to go there, there, and then two to the left, two down, two right, and then back again. We need to we need to reinclude the original tile, otherwise it'll sort of do a skip <laughs> straight over. So we need to add that tile as well. All right. So the logic needs to a check uh, all of these cells are free, and b if they are, uh, insert them into the path just after this point here, and then proceed on to see if you can find another one. So let's have a look at that logic now. One second. Okay, so here we are in the code, um, and you can see what I've done now. Is I've, uh, I've still used the original method to generate the path, but you'll notice this is new variable called true. And if we go into here, what you'll see is that I've got an add loops function. So you do have the option of adding them, yes or no. All right. So then what we can do is the same stuff as well. Uh, I've added randomize, which I think maybe makes things a little bit better. Uh, but it goes through, does the same stuff as it did before, no change there. And then I've added a new uh, if statement, if add loops add loops if we have a little look at this what this is going to do is it's going to um it's going to run multiple times because potentially what could happen is the first time it finds a loop or two but then stops and there could be other loops that could be generated so it's going to keep going around until it can't generate any more um and then what we then do is we call a function called um is loop option right so this is going to go through each of the elements to see if it has any of those spots of the four spots that could be one of them. So let's have a look at is loop option. This is the chunky bit of code here. Uh, and I will put this on GitHub. Okay, so um, I, you know, I can't expect you to, 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 to type all this out. So I'll put this on GitHub. Please download it. Please let me know how you go. Um, and here is the logic, right? So literally, I am checking all of those tiles. And you can see I've sort of tried to um, uh, keep them in line depending on which which row they're on um, and if all of those tiles are free you know I've created a function here called tile lock free I'll spin down here and all that does is just say if if, if it's free or not right uh, I feel like the array class should have stuff like this but there we go um, if tile lock free 
um hang on, let's go to the first one uh you know and it's checking every single spot if they are all available then we create a return path and we populate it with the the, the um the path that it's going to take along that um route and then ignore that for a second because i'm going to talk about how that all um, works in a moment uh, and then at the end we actually add the um the last tile now i could in theory have added that last tile there this the last tile is the let me go back to the presentation so the last tile is is this one this is one here right so you see the path is this that it's going to follow around and then it's going to insert that again now you might be wondering why i didn't insert that as part of the uh, loop here why I didn't just stick it at the end there well I'll come to that in a moment because this whole logic creates a problem in its own in its own right uh, and then basically I've done that four times uh, for each of the four possible um, ways that these tiles could be free and if at any point that any of these are available then it just as it creates the appropriate path um, look at that that's a bit bad don't you there we go um, that didn't seem to fail did it and then away it goes um yeah so i've commented out some of the confusing bits and that's the logic you can see why i didn't want to um you can see why i didn't want to put this uh to type all this out otherwise you'd have been sat there watching me uh, or at least i could have sped it up or something but it would have been mighty confusing so that's all this really does and then it returns back to that class here and it says right okay if that has returned a um a path then add it to has returned a loop you know set of grid values then insert it into the path and again I'd, i've had to do this manually i would love to have been able to in the array just say insert at and then put the path in but hey hey gd script doesn't do that um yeah so so it goes through and just inserts those lines into the path there so if we just have another little look here uh, you can see I, by the way I, I, what i've done i've been a bit crafty here on the main here i've done a little check um if i go back to main here you, i've added some uh variables here ignore the ones down below i'll come to them in a minute but you'll see that it's here um let me just hide myself one second um yeah so you can see i've got map length map height <coughs> uh map min size map min path size min max path size and some loops here as well uh so i've done a little check here to say you know um keep looping until you generate a path that matches those values which is why in our example um uh sorry here You'll see there's always two loops so it's just doing that kind of thing first so you can adjust these i found that you, they don't you know it's not a perfect science you sometimes you end up in a situation where it can't generate the um it can't generate the path for instance if i said min loops is five or something it's probably not going to find them it probably can't do it but play around we, uh, and, and and see what you can uh, see what you can create um yeah so we've got those around there and so we're doing some checks and, and around it goes and so that is all hunky dory and we've got our paths so far so good but I hit a problem <clears throat> and let me see if I can find an example do you know what I might do I might just make this bigger um, make that 60 and then say max loops is five or something like that just try and see if we can get it to do it here we go this is an example perfect example here what's what's happened is it's going to come up here and it's going to come around and it's going to come down here in fact let me let me I created a little uh, uh, um, path to, to uh, uh, path generator to uh to to actually do this so if i just where's the call for it pop along there it is let's just do that um if i actually run this a few times and again i need to create here we oh my goodness now that's too confusing <laughs> let me find one that actually does look okay um yeah well this is probably an example that's going to work i mean the middle of the moment it's not to uh, could do with speeding it up a bit couldn't i right so what's going to happen now <clears throat> is rather than go straight down, I think it's going to take a really rather weird route. And the reason for that, and why is it going to go now? It's going to go down. Okay, you see, so it should have gone straight on. Should have, it's, I think it's now it's going to go left. It's going to take the strangest route. Look, look at that. So that, that's a very odd route. And really what it should have been going is straight across, all the way down, around, left and right. And the reason for that, the reason for that is if we go back to our presentation, here we can see that the path is this direction but potentially we're not necessarily coming in from this direction if there's a loop within a loop it's very, it's very cool uh, that um, this has generated these kind of loops within loops 
but it's also very annoying because it's coming in from a different direction. And I ummed and ahed about this, trying to work out the best way to do it. Maybe I should sort of have another step that kind of goes through the path and follows a north, south, east, west route, sort of a you know a sort of clever way of trying to figure it out. And I had a bit of a brainwave. Um, look at this. Look at the way it's going. <laughs> it's so confusing. So the, the the answer is that if you look at this here there's two possible ways it can come in the normal way let's call it which is which is this route here but it could also come in from this direction here if it's a loop within a loop so if we had one up here <clears throat> if we had a loop oh, what have we just done hang on let's go back um if we had a loop here that goes around obviously it's not going to fit in this uh, window here but if it went around here then you can see that it would have come from this direction so what i've said is if we go back to path generator, which I, I, I commented these bits out, by the way, so just to show you what the problem was. If, basically, I've said, look, if the Y value is this, this one here, um, I need to get the right, right ones, um, is greater than this one dot Y. So if it's coming from that direction, is that right? Is that the blue one? That's yellow. Sorry, so it's this one here. Yeah, so this is an example, right? So the, for the yellow one, if the Y value is greater then the, the where it started here, then it must have come from below, not from the left. And I've done this each time. It confused me a little bit. I suppose I could have done it a different, slightly different way. But uh, but yeah, it's it's come from here, not from here. So reverse the loop. So rather than go that way, go that way. Um, uh, sorry, rather than go that way, go that way, <laughs> um, and then you can go back, and 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 this the, this works. So now if I do these, um, and and again I had to kind of do a different rule for each scenario, but you get the idea, right? Um, and this is why I had to add the kind of the starting square after I'd made the reversing decision or not. Is there one more? Yeah, there is. Um, I had to make the decision after, you know, and then at the end, add the final square. So it's going to come, go around and do, and then add that one, or it's going to reverse it, come back, and then add that one. Okay, and this works. And I really appreciate how how very confusing that is. Oh, here we go. It's a good example. Um, it totally spun me. It really did for a long time, and I thought I was I was going to come unstuck. But now, by by having that rule about the direction that it started at you can actually see that we've got ourselves loops. Hurrah. <laughs> um, I will, like I say, I will 100% make this code available. I hope that you'll take it on and have a little look. Um, yeah, and away it goes. Now, now it's happy. Obviously, what we could actually do, and I wanted to do this, was actually make this an eight, one of the eight, one of the enemies. Um, and, and let's do that now. Let's quickly add, add that rather than just a cube. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Um, and it just stops. It doesn't do anything now. It's just proving uh, that, that it could work. Um, so I did create a function called pop along path. I called it not the best, uh, not the best name. Uh, where are you? Oh, it's being main, won't it? Uh, yeah, pop along grid. There you go, pop along grid. Uh, and what we can actually do here we go. I've actually uh, minimized it for clarity. I'm using a box at the moment. But what we could do in our main up here, just for fun, is we could add export var uh, tile enemy, and that's this isn't gonna this isn't gonna be a, a long term thing. Pack scene, and then um, if I just search here for enemy uh, UFO green, and just uh, hang on, I think I've got to save it before it does it. Hang on, if I save it, it'll appear. No, not F five. Sorry, Control S. You being a bit of a moment, I've got to go back out and come back in. Where are you? Where's Tile Enemy? It's gone down there. Um, because it needs to be above that one there. I did not realize it had them in that order. That does make some sense. There we go. And now I've, I've learned something to say. Tile, tile Enemy is there now. Um, and if I bring that UFO green in to there, and what I can do in the uh, pop along grid is rather than just say this, we're just going to say, um, Get rid of that. We're gonna. Well, we could just do that, couldn't we? We could just say um, file enemy dot new. Uh, and then what I did was I actually created the curve to match the path. This again, this is a curve three Ds are great, and I'll, I'm going to talk about the path three D in a minute, um, and, and probably more in the next tutorial. But um, but yeah, the um, is it going to work? No, it's not. 
tileenemy.new. One second. Sorry, I'm being dim, aren't I? It's instantiate. I'm so used to doing new. Hang on, let's do that. That should work. There we go. Look at that. How cool is he? Right. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. You can't see it spinning. It will. That's interesting. I hadn't realized that. It kind of spins along there. It's a little high as well, isn't it? And we can adjust that in a second. Let's just adjust, let's adjust that now. 0.1. Look at this one. I mean, look at this confusion here. You can see how, how my head was in all sorts of trouble uh, as I was <laughs> trying to work this out. Um, but, but now, because I've got that rule in, it will behave itself and follow a sensible route all the way around. Look at that. It's oh, I need to make it slightly higher, don't I? It looks like it's tucking into that code there. So, I mean, this is this is this is so irrelevant. But um, yeah, so this this little pop along grid here, this is going to be uh, part pave the way. Excuse the uh, the pun there for how we're going to create our path for the alien, for the enemies to come along, and it works well. Uh, it, it does work well. It, it solves a problem about rotating as it goes around corners. Um, yeah, the. And that is, um, you know, that has been a problem before because qu quite often what you can do is just make it go hit a point and then, and then keep going, whereas this actually follows a smooth path. But we will talk more about that in the next episode. Um, but for now, I think the uh, only thing left to explain is how I managed to do all of these different resources. And the way I did that was to, rather than have just a single empty tile, I have an array of packed scenes. And if I go back to main here, you'll here we go you'll see that actually the tile empty now is an array and i've added crystals rocks trees and you'll see that i've done it tile four times one two three four <laughs> this was my way of making tile more prominent the empty tile more prominent so i don't know if that's the clean way there's probably a much better way of doing that but you can see obviously that the, therefore the tile the empty tiles are going to be more more available and if i go to the uh, main.gd uh, complete grid isn't it now what we do here <clears throat> is it adds a uh, tile empty dot pick random so there's a function in the array called pick random which is good news right and then instantiate that now i think this isn't going to work long term because we don't know what tile has been picked so we need to store this somewhere so that we can when we drag our little workers uh, that it knows which tiles are trees which tiles are um, crystals, which tiles are rocks, and so on, which tiles are empty, right? So, so that's something we need to think about. But but it does um, it does pick a random tile, and, and away it goes. So, that's back to me. Um, so I hope that makes some sense. I hope I hope that made sense. I, I appreciate that this is a very quick tutorial for something that's taken me so long. Um, I will make it available, and then in the next episode, what we're actually going to do is talk about creating the waves of these guys that are going to generate. And for that, we're going to need to add some health, um, and yeah, you know, and decrease the health as and when the uh, alien here, for instance, reaches its target. So until next time, I hope that made sense. I hope you enjoyed. Look forward to seeing you soon. And by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> See you now. Bye bye.